Good afternoon and thanks for having us in. New this midday, Sioux Falls officials are investigating the cause of a school bus crash in the northeastern part of the city. A Kelloland News producer was at Leedale Avenue earlier this morning and got video of the aftermath of the crash. One vehicle was seen being towed away. A witness says children were moved from the crash bus to another bus. At this time, injuries are unknown. Stay with us to stay up to date on this story on air and online. A Sioux Falls man is back in jail facing his eighth DUI. Police arrested Antoine Powell on Saturday evening. In this latest case, he's charged with DUI, assault, and driving with a revoked license. According to court records, it's Powell's third drunk driving arrest this year and his second arrest this month. He also has a pending animal abuse case. According to an affidavit, he stabbed and killed a cat in January. Witnesses told police he was drunk and didn't remember doing it. Pivoting to weather, it's chilly out there now. Tomorrow, Halloween looks to be even colder, right, Adam? But it could be worse. It could be snowing. Okay. I'm just going to put that out there. It will be a little bit on the windy side as well to kick things off tomorrow, but the wind does gradually back off. I'm getting a little ahead of myself. We do have some wind to talk about this evening as we go through the rest of your Monday. At least we don't have a whole lot going on in terms of active weather. There's a beautiful view from our downtown camera. Blue skies above Sioux Falls, 36 at the airport with a southwest wind sustained at 15 miles per hour. Compare that to what we have out west in Rapid City. Just a small difference above. If you look really carefully, there's a few high level clouds up there. 41 in Rapid City, a light and variable breeze in place, but uh, the wind is going to pick up a little bit more out to the west later today. We're at 34 in Pier, as well as Brookings, 30 Aberdeen, 41 in Winter, 30 Custer, 36 Spearfish, 33 Yankton, 34 for Spencer, and 31 in Worthington. Sustained winds again are on the brisk side in a couple of areas, uh, 10 to 20 miles per hour, even 20 to 30. If you're over towards Spearfish, Belfouche, into uh, Buffalo and Bison. Uh, we will have some wind headlines to talk about later this evening in Tan. For the Pier area, up toward Mulbridge, Eureka, then over into Aberdeen, Redfield, and Watertown up to Sisseton. That wind advisory will go into place this evening, roughly during the evening commute, and then going through the first portion of your night Tonight, wind gusts may reach and exceed 50 miles per hour at times, so you will want to keep this in mind. Outside of that, we have a couple of flurries over toward uh, Corson County, Perkins County as well. Maybe seeing a few flakes over toward Bison, Lemon, and McIntosh, but that's really just about it. The rest of your day today, overall, not bad, although becoming windy as we head into the afternoon. 40s and a couple of upper 30s for southeastern Kelloland with a good amount of sunshine in place. Up to the northeast, a little bit cooler towards Sisseton and Watertown. 40 or better can be over toward Miller and Aberdeen with a few more clouds with the passage of a cold front that we'll be keeping an eye on. And out west, we'll see 40s to near 50 in a few areas, including 49 today in Rapid City, 48 for Pier, but some 30s uh, from Spearfish Points north to the North Dakota border. Also notice that wind. We'll talk about the rest of your seven day forecast, including a look at the first weekend of November coming up in a little bit. A very big hello to a place where we've done very well. Sioux Falls. Thank you very much, Sioux Falls. And thank you also to this incredible, incredible state. It's been very good for us. And Former President Donald Trump was campaigning at the Orpheum Theater in Sioux City, Iowa yesterday. After walking up to the podium, he talked about his success in Sioux Falls, but was actually in Sioux City. Audience members could be heard correcting him. Meanwhile, court arguments have begun in the efforts to bar him from running for his old job again. A week-long hearing is scheduled on whether the U.S. Constitution's clause barring someone who, quote, engaged in insurrection against it means Trump can't run for president in Colorado. On Thursday, the Minnesota Supreme Court will consider the same issue for the Minnesota ballot. The nation's highest court has never ruled on the clause, which was added after the Civil War. Israel's military says it has expanded its ground operation inside Gaza today as it continues its mission to destroy Hamas in the wake of the terror group's barbaric attack on mostly civilian targets in Israel earlier this month. It follows heavy bombing over the weekend, causing large numbers of Palestinian civilian casualties, according to Hamas, which also released new proof of life of some of the hostages it is holding. Skylar Henry reports from the White House. 
These are the images from a video Hamas released Monday of Israeli hostages calling on Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu to agree to a ceasefire and release Hamas prisoners so they can be freed. It's not known if the woman spoke willingly or whether they were told what to say. The same day, people in Jerusalem held a moment of silence for the hostages, empty beds representing the more than 200 captives. It comes as Israel's military says it's expanded its operation into Gaza. Israel Defense Forces released video of what it says are tanks in the Hamas-controlled territory. Israel's military says troops destroyed anti-tank missile launchers and killed four prominent Hamas operatives. With flares and smoke hovering over the Gaza skyline, displaced Palestinian civilians are calling for more humanitarian aid as conditions continue to worsen. United Nations officials say over the weekend, thousands broke into warehouses holding badly needed supplies. In a call Sunday with Prime Minister Netanyahu, President Biden reiterated Israel's right to defend itself, but also said that Israel needs to be within the laws of war. They've got to that, that extra burden of making sure that they're doing everything they can to protect innocent life. That's hard for any military fighting in an urban environment. The violence is also expanding to the West Bank, where four Palestinians were killed in clashes with Israeli forces. And sirens sounded in Jerusalem as a warning of incoming rockets launched from Gaza. Skyler Henry, CBS News, the White House. A house in a southern Israeli city was also badly damaged by a rocket from Gaza.